presentation, but before we get into, uh, well, actually, no, we'll just get into it. Let me do that. So there are two parts to the listing presentation. The first part of the listing presentation is choose me. The second part of the listing presentation is going to be price. Okay. So one of the things I always want to say is, is keep in mind that the first thing that has to happen before we choose price. So, so said another way, do not talk price with a seller until you know they have chosen you. Once you know they've chosen you, it's okay to, to talk price with them, but until they choose you, don't talk price. Now, why? Why should we not talk price until they've chosen us? Because, well, I have taken your class before. That's fine. And you have said... You can be the star. That's you, good. No, no, well, you said that, that there, is, there is a strategy that you don't want to reveal unless they choose you. You don't want to go to that subject unless you know that you guys are going to work together. Okay, good. So yeah, so part of the reason is I'm going to share some strategies with them that I don't want to share if they're not going to use me. So good, that's part of it. Well, plus if you get if you discuss the price first, then now they've got the information that they need. That's right. They don't need you now. Yeah. Now, the other thing, yes, exactly right. The other thing to keep in mind is when I say price here, I'm talking both price of the house, but I'm also talking commission. Yeah. So don't talk commission or price of the house until. Now, the other thing that happens is if if you tell them you're going to charge them a 7 or an 8% commission, what's what are they immediately going to be thinking? Well, I could go find somebody to do it for $3,000. Why would I pay you 6 or 7 or 8%? Of course, you got to bring the value. First, you got to bring the value. That's the key. That's the main thing with under this choose me is um, we're going to talk about six things that have to happen before they're going to choose you or in order for them to choose you. And one of those things, bless you, is create value. So part of the reason that we don't talk price or commission with them until they have chosen you is because in their mind, every agent out there is the same. Like the whole reason we have brokerages out there that do it for $1,000 or $3,000 or whatever, that they'll list their home for that, is because the consumer looks at it and says, you guys are all the same, you're overpaid, therefore I'm only going to give you... For the why should I pay somebody twenty thousand when I could get it for three? And to some extent, that makes sense unless you see the value. And for me, the proof of that is you look out in the parking lot. Look how many different cars there are in the parking lot. Why are there so many different cars? Why are we not all driving the cheapest car we could find, and they're all the same out in the parking lot? Because for the people that can afford it, they want the very best. Well, so when you say the people that can afford it, but even if they can afford it, shouldn't they be even smarter with their money and say, well, I'm not going to do that when, because now logistically, does it matter which of those vehicles I drive out there to get from here to point, from point A to point B? Sometimes like, it does. Why? Safety. Okay. So, but now all of a sudden we're starting to get into the, the value yeah. of it. But, but without that, like as far as like, could any of those vehicles get us from here to the point of the mountain? Sure. But each car offers a different. That's right. A different value, a different. That's right. And we're willing to pay that kind of money for them because we see the value. If we didn't, we would all be like, well, what's the cheapest car? And let's buy it. Well, we'll all buy it and we'll drive it and go there. So, so. Don't get caught up or don't think that people won't pay for value. They'll pay for value because some of it is that I like the safety. Others are like, I like the comfort that they have. So there are different things that we're paying for in the vehicles. Because if you stop and think about it, we should all be out driving, what, a Toyota Corolla or something like. So I... I no offense if anybody's driving a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I had a neighbor that, that was doing... A for sale by owner 
and then but he they were kind of coached by a friend that was an agent kind of like i'll just kind of coach you but you can do it yourself and then at the end they they said you know what we hate people calling us all the time we don't want to be talking to those people therefore they ended up using an agent now i don't know if in those brokerages that charge a flat fee i don't know if they are the ones handling the calls or the brokerages that i don't know um it well it depends on the brokerage so the, the answer to that is it depends on the brokerage they're all going to be different some have people that that the agent goes out and just get it signed and then somebody else handles it others the agent's still handling it still doing everything for the three thousand dollars or whatever it is. okay so now how do we get people to choose us the first thing that has to happen is there has to be a connection or some rapport built okay so, and I'm going to show you in our listing presentation the, how we do this, all of these things, but I first want to make sure we understand. The next thing is, is that we have to help them to feel safe, okay? They have to feel safe in, and in fact, part of what I would say, or the question I would ask is, and, and probably this is more for Scott than, than you two, and I'm just assuming that, so I might be wrong, but... <laughs> well, just because you've, I think you've been licensed longer than, yeah. than oh, yeah. is really the reason. But when you didn't get a listing, when you've gone out on a listing presentation, have you been on a listing presentation yet? So that's why I'm not asking you. Yeah. Have you done a listing presentation? Okay, so you can answer it too. When you went out on the listing presentation and then didn't get the listing, what is the reason people give you typically? Like they might have all kinds of different reasons, but in general, what is the reason that they didn't list with you? He, he didn't, well, he didn't give me at the moment a specific reason. He just says, I want to think about it. But behind that, prior to that, I was being co agents with a person that he didn't like. Okay. He says, I don't like your boss. He okay. called it my boss. He said, I don't like your boss. Okay. And, and I believe mainly that's the reason he didn't list me because I don't want to work so with okay but so it doesn't matter if he liked him what does it matter if he liked him or not well he says that that he has he gives me different he gives me different answers he gives me one price and then okay over there he gives me okay, another. so okay perfect yeah so okay what would you say when people don't list what's usually the reason what do they tell you of why they didn't list it? Well, it's usually they have somebody else they know or a friend or or something but that's not the real reason. What, but the reason is, usually it's they say to you, I felt, we felt better about this other person. Yeah. We met with all these agents and we just went with the one we felt the best about, which is another way of saying they felt safe with them. Okay. Now, part of that, and think of this as two sides of the same coin, like a heads and a tails. But the third reason or the third thing that has to happen is they have to trust you. And, and I sometimes feel like maybe I should say because they trust me, they then feel safe. But sometimes I'm like, well, they feel safe and then therefore they trust me. So it, it could be either way. It's either they felt safe and so they trusted me or they trusted me, which then had them to feel safe. So think of it as a coin with heads and tails on it kind of a thing. Okay? So we first have to build a connection and rapport, help them feel safe. They can then trust us. Then the next thing we, we need to do is we need to create value. Number five is we then need to separate yourself, oops, yourself from the competition. Okay. So the next thing that we has to happen for them to choose us is we have to separate ourselves from the competition. So we got to get the connection rapport, help them feel safe and trust us, create value, then um, separate ourselves. And, and again, you could think of these two as being the same type of a thing is because you separate yourself, you create value or you created value, which then separates yourself. But, but once we've separated ourselves from the competition, see, that's what the cars are doing. They're just trying to separate themselves. Somebody's going to buy a truck because they're like, well, I might want to haul something or I just like being higher up off the road. Somebody else is going to buy, well, I wish, a lot of times there is the Rolls Royce out there, the SUV Rolls Royce out there. Why would somebody spend that, that, I don't know how much that vehicle 
cost when it's out there. It's got to be six, seven hundred thousand dollars for that vehicle out there. Have you seen it? I haven't no. seen it. I haven't oh. seen the Rolls oh. Royce one. So you, so in between us and the truck, that blank spot of parking lot. A lot of times, right between those two trucks, the blue one and the white one, there'll be an SUV, a black SUV parked there. Drive by next time. It's a Rolls Royce. Wow. Oh, and, wow. and it's new. I mean, when I say new, probably six months or less. It's actually mine. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I know whose it is. It's not yours. So, <laughs> no, so you even it's your know dad's. It. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> what? You even know who that is. I know who it is. He's on the fourth floor. Sometimes the, the separation is just the numbers that they get. Like, I did relocation for a while when I was here before. Yeah. And I, when you go out on a relocation listing, you got three agents that yeah. go out, and they went with the one, like this one time, they went with the agent that just told them the highest price that they could. Yeah. Well, and usually, here's what I will say, though, and don't be offended by this, but usually they're going to choose that highest price because they feel like there's the value there. And, and granted, no question that... They're just, they're believing, well, you're going to get me more money. And yeah. in the I mean, end of the day, they, they don't. They ended up lowering the price yeah, of what they, I told them. It was exactly. Before. That's the frustration. Yeah, so that anyway, all right. Let, number six is then we have to close. Okay. So don't talk price until all these things have happened and they have chosen you. Okay. So that's the first key piece. So what would we say then if somebody were to say to us, whether it's on the phone prospecting or let's say that it's while I'm at their house to do the presentation and they say, well, what do you, what's your commission? Or what's, what's the price you think we should list our home for? Like maybe they even say to you, so you just got there. So I'm going to pick on you game. Sure. You just barely got to their house. You set an appointment to go talk to them about listing. They get to the house and they go, Hey, so before you get started, just, can you tell us like, like, I don't want to waste your time. So like, what's the commission you're going to charge? Will I actually tell you or will I just... Well, I don't know. That's what I want to know. Well, first off, what you've learned in class so far is don't tell them until yeah. they've chosen you. Okay. Well, actually, uh, I was planning on talking to you about that at our uh, appointment. Well, no, you're at my appointment. You're oh, this is house. the appointment. You're at my house. Yep, perfect. This is the appointment. So that is a great answer on the phone, but now uh -huh. you're at my house. Well, I don't know if you're working with me yet. No, you just barely got to my house. Okay. And I'm like, hey, I don't want to... Before you get into all your script and stuff, what... What are you going to charge me? Well, I need, I need to know if we're working together first. So. Well, me too. So what are you going to charge me? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what I'd say. Okay, good. That's what Honestly. I'm going to help you. So here's what you want to do. Whether it's on the phone. On the phone, the great answer is, hey, we'll talk about that when I come out and meet with you. But, but to me, the other thing you can say. So now let's reverse it and you do that to me. So now I'm the agent. I'm at your house. So uh, before we get started and... Do your script and everything. What uh, what are you going to charge me? Yeah, so so you're wanting ultimately you're thinking like, hey, how much is it going to cost me yeah. to use you as an yeah. agent? Yeah, and if I were you, I'd be wondering the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. But before I can tell you the answer to that, I need to ask you a number of questions to find out really what is going to be best for you. Okay. Now press again. Press again. Yeah. So just ask. Yeah. But no. Like I want to know. Okay, I just, I just want to know how much it's going to cost me if we're going to go with you. Okay, so yeah, let me, I'll, I, like I was saying, for sure, ultimately, I first need to find out ultimately what you're wanting to accomplish before I can tell you for sure what that's going to be. But let me tell you, it could be as low as zero, but it also could be as high as 8%. But what I'll tell you is it'll make sense to, you're going to decide, not me. Like, at the end of the day, you're going to decide what that commission is, but I first need to find out what you want to accomplish and then show you the different options. So okay. is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. perfect. Then let's go through and talk about it. So that's what I'm not going to answer the question. If, if they just kept pushing, hey, well, no, I, it doesn't matter what you say. Like, what's your commission? I'm going to say I, I really can't answer that question until I know for sure what you're going to expect from me. So first what I want to do, and then so now that'll, that will take us into – now our listing presentation. So let me go with first. So the first thing you're going to do in the listing presentation is what we call TAP. TAP stands for Think, Acknowledge, and Promise. Okay, so we're going to think, acknowledge, and then promise them. Okay. So as soon as I get to the house, 
I want to thank them for taking the time to meet with me. I want to acknowledge them. Now, keep in mind, the number one human need that people have is to be acknowledged. They want to be, all of us want to be accepted. Every one of us wants that. So what we want to do is we want to thank them for taking the time to meet with me. And then I want to acknowledge either something about the house. So I want to acknowledge, you know, hey, the, the way that the flower bed looks is great. The, the front door, your curb appeal is nice. The roof looks good. Like, what, you know, whatever. Acknowledge something to them about that house and then make some type of a promise to them. So I would want to be doing it as, hey, Gabe, thanks for taking the time to meet with me. And, you know, when we talked on the phone, you know, you had mentioned that, you know, getting the home was sold was important to you. And I, and I want to make sure that you know that I know how important that is to you of, of you getting your home sold. And and we're going to go through we're going to talk about how to do that in, and in a way that's going to net you the most amount of money. So I promise at the end of our meeting you are going to actually say, I am so glad that I met with you. That's, that's kind of what you want to do with this is I want to thank them. I want to acknowledge. And, and so, like I say, if there wasn't something from the phone call, I might acknowledge, just acknowledge that, Hey, when I drove up, like I noticed, like you have the best yard in the whole block. Like every, nobody's yards greener than yours. Like I love, so who, so then I might go, so who's like, the one who works on the grass, keeping it green. Is it you or your kid? Uh, usually I just have my son go on. Your it. son goes yeah. out and does it? Okay. Well, wow. He does, yeah, just know he does a great job. Like, I'm impressed. Thank with, you. So that could be that I'm acknowledging it that way, and then I'm promising of, hey, but at the end of our meeting, I promise I'm going to give you some information that's going to help you. Whether you end up wanting me to help you get your home sold or not, I'm going to give you some great information. Okay? Next. The next thing that I'm going to do is look at the house. Okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is go look at the house. Now, in terms of this, keep in mind as we're looking at the house, what the heck, this clock says it's 923. How's it messed up? I guess it's got the 23, right? So is, this I mean, it's got the is this recording? This is recording. Yes. So I am going to put it in meeting. Yes, you will have it. In fact, I was just thinking that when I saw you turn your phone around, no, I, 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 I almost said, you know, Luz, it's being recorded already. I just wanted the, the answer to, I want to know. I yeah, want I want the know. price. Okay, good. So, okay, so now I'm going to go look at the house. Now, in terms of looking at the house, you have two different options. Either you have them show you the house or you go look at it yourself. You decide. I'll tell you how I decide, but for you, it's up to you to decide how you want to do it. For me, I usually am going to do it one of two ways. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to keep pointing us back to this. So let me even first go back to this. When I said thank, acknowledge, when I did the acknowledge of, hey, I know you talked about how important it is getting the home sold, and, and I want to know you, you to know I heard that and that I understand and I'm going to do everything I can, all of that is about creating this connection report and to help them feel safe and to trust me. So now when we come to looking at the house, when it comes time to looking at the house, I'm going to look at how connected do I feel like I have with them. Right? Is there a connection and some rapport? If there is, I'm probably more likely to go look at the house myself. If I feel like I need more connection and rapport, I'm going to ask them to show me through the house. So I'd be saying, hey, Kate, you know, let's, uh, after I did this thing, acknowledge promise, I'd say, hey, so I, the first thing I want to do is take a look at your home. So will you walk me through and just kind of show me the house? Yeah. And then, yes, he's going to now walk me through. Now, I'm going to do that if I need this connection and rapport. If I don't, if I feel like we already have a good connection or rapport, and and for me, the other thing that comes into play for this on me is how, how much time do I have for the appointment? If I feel like I need to get on to my next appointment, then I'm probably going to say, so Gabe, hey, you did a great job, blah, blah, blah. I promise I'm going to give you some good information. What I would like to do next is to take a look at your home, but I want to do it through the eyes of a buyer. So if you're okay with it, I'm going to just walk through and look at it by myself the way that a buyer would look at it, and then we can meet back up and and I'm going to, we'll talk more about you know questions or things that I have. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to go okay because you you guys know like if 
If I walk through it with Gabe, he's going to be like, oh, I got to tell you about how my, my son won this trophy. Like he is, you know, they're going to want to tell me about the trophy versus if I'm looking at it myself, I'm going to walk in and go, okay, it's a normal bedroom. The carpet looks okay. The, the paint looks good. Okay, uh, good. Next, I'm going to go to the next room and be like, okay, walk-in closet, a um, lot of storage. Yep, normal room. Okay, next. Like I can go through the house really fast on my own. But if they walk me through, which again, back to if you need that connection and rapport and you want them to feel acknowledged, see, when I'm walking through and Gabe says, let me tell you about how my son won this trophy, I might be like, wow, yeah, tell me more about the, that. How did he get the trophy? Yeah. And and what was it? You know, How did you play a role? Oh, wow, that's so cool. And so I might use showing the house as a way to connect, create this connection and rapport. Okay? All right, now that we've looked at the house, next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to sit down and I am going to um, give to him what we either, we sometimes call this the map or we may call it a game plan or I might call it an overview, okay? That's how I do it, is I might say, okay, so okay. House looks great, wow, like I'm excited and the other thing that I might do also, just so you know, is as I'm walking through and looking at the house, I might point things out as well with him where, where I'll do stuff like this. I might walk through the house and be like, hey, Gabe, so what happened here? Oh, my son and my, my two kids were wrestling and they digged up the wall. Yeah, okay. So. Okay, and then I'll make a note. What's he thinking the moment I do that? That you are paying attention. Yeah. Okay, good. But what else is he thinking? Uh oh, that's something I gotta fix. Yeah, yeah. I, I, ooh, like they might even say, "Do you think I gotta fix that?" And I'll be like, "Um, wouldn't hurt," or whatever. I mean, depending on what it is, I might say yes, I might say no. But but I may walk through and be like, "Um, so what?" I mean, I'm not seeing anything else really to point out in here. But let's say that like one of these ceiling tiles had like a water stain on it as we walk through. So to some extent. As I walk through, if you are going to walk through the house with them, point out every little thing you see. Like, just kind of ask, so what happened with this? And, you know, do you know what caused the, the water stain on, on, on here? And what's this stain in the carpet over here from? And now, why? Why would I do that? Part of it is because when we do go to talk about price, what does the seller think about their house? It's perfect. It's, perfect. Yeah. it's worth more than everybody else's house. Yet, if I kind of, and again, I'm not going to do it in a bad way, but I might be like, hey, so tell me about what happened here. And they, they may say, well, do you think I should get that fixed? Yeah, you might want to, but we'll talk about that later. We'll, we'll see if, you know, let's keep going. And then I'm going to just point out things in the house as I go through. All right. So now that we've done that, we sit down so, and I ask a quick question. Yeah. When I was doing a walkthrough with one of the sellers, I noticed something in the basement that looked like a water mark right there on the wall. Yep. Uh, and I, I said, what, what happened in there? And he says, oh, well, my son was uh, playing and he splashed some water on the on the wall. But I'm thinking, that's not, I didn't say that. I'm thinking, that's not it. That will dry off. That yeah. looked like a water mark from something else. Yeah. So what? Well, just leave it alone. Leave it like that. No, I probably if it was something like that where I was, I would say really. I probably would say real. So let's role play it. Uh -huh. So what happened with this, Luz? Oh, my children were playing and they just spilled some water. That that's from spilled water. Mm -hmm. So notice how I would be like, that's from spilled water. Yeah. Like what? What's the message I'm kind of sending? It's like. That's sure? so, so depending, like, without me actually seeing it, I don't know for sure how I would respond. But I might say, I'm probably what I would do is come and push on it. Is probably what I would do okay. because if it's so, if it like you said, if somebody spills some water in there, it dries. Yeah. Now here's the thing to keep in mind. Sometimes what they mean by spilled water is they ran the hose through the the window and they were spraying their best friend. Yeah. Like they might, oh, they just spilled some water. Yeah, with the hose, you know. But yeah. I probably would come over and push on it, and if it was soft, I would be. So that's why, to me, I usually will come over and be like, "Ooh, what, what happened here?" So you would touch it. 
Yeah, I, I probably would go and on that, I would push to see is it soft. And if it's soft, I would say, oh, we might want to get that fixed. Because if you noticed it, a buyer's going to notice it and they're going to assume, and I would even say that to them. The concern is a buyer might look at that and go, that doesn't look like it's just, so you could blame it on the buyers. You could just say, when buyers come through, they're going to look at this and they're going to think that's not just water spilled. There might be a bigger problem. Yeah, because in the end, he ended up selling that house. But a long, long story. But in the end, he ended up selling at 20 best. Yeah, makes sense. So there probably was bigger problems. Okay, so then we're going to sit down and say, okay, let me, let me give you an overview of what we're going to talk about. So sometimes I'll say, let me, let's, I'm going to give you my game plan or, or my overview, a map of, of what we're going to talk about. And here's the idea. Everybody wants to know where we're headed. Like they're nervous when you're coming to meet with them of like, what, what, what's this going to be like? And, and we don't want to commit if it's not right and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to use this as a way to just help them feel a little more at ease. So I'm going to say, Gabe, before we get going, I just want to give you an overview or a game plan of what we're going to talk about. So first thing we're going to talk about is your needs, your wants, and ultimately your expectations from me. But I'll also share with you, Gabe, what I would expect from you as a seller. Then, after that, then we're going to talk about what do I do to get a home sold. So we're going to talk about, now I always say it and write it down here as marketing, but we're not actually going to talk about marketing. But I say to them, we're going to talk about what I do to get a home sold. After we, so after we talk about your needs, wants, and expectations, we're going to talk about what do I do to get a home sold? What makes me different? So this is where I am going to then separate myself. Okay? So I might even say to them, you know, after we talk about your needs, wants, and expectations, and I'm going to share with you what I do to get a home sold and what makes me different than every other agent out there. Then number three, we're going to talk about the market. So after we've talked about what you what it is you need, want, and expect, I'll share with you what I do to get a home sold. Then after that, we're going to talk about what's going on in the market today. Now, in terms of that, we're going to talk about the macro, like big picture. So we're going to talk about the big picture. We're then going to talk about pricing. And then we're going to talk about the CMA. So I may even say to them, so Gabe, well, in fact, let me get the last one. And then, and then number four is then close. Okay. So here's how I'm going to say it to Gabe. So Gabe, wow, house looks great. And we'll talk more about some of the things that, uh, that maybe you should do to get the home ready to sell. Once we get to the point of you um, deciding if, if we're going to work together or not. But first, I want to ask you some questions that's going to help me understand your needs, wants, and ultimately your expectations. After that, we'll talk about, so what do I do to get a home sold? What makes me different than every other agent out there? After we've talked about that, we'll then talk about what's going on in the market today. We're going to talk about how what's going on in the market today is going to affect the pricing of your home and how we should price your home. And then ultimately, we'll talk then about what we should list your home for. And then after that, if you're comfortable and confident with everything I've had to say, I'll just ask you to sign some paperwork, okay? Okay. That's it. And then bam. Then he's Now, what did I just do, though, by saying, after we've talked about all that stuff, if you're comfortable and confident in me, I'm just going to ask you to sign some paperwork. It okay? Close. Yeah, I'm giving, I'm setting him up for the close of, like, and he already said, okay, if you're comfortable and confident, we'll have you sign some paperwork, okay? And I always say it that way, okay? okay. And they go, okay, perfect. All right, so now, number four. I'm going to do it over here. Let's... Number four is going to be now questions. And those questions are going to be designed around this. Getting to the needs, wants, and expectations. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask him some questions. The questions are going to be, you always want to make sure your questions are starting with, I like to use describe 
describe for me or share with me or tell me about or help me understand. Okay? So I'm going to ask, describe for me, I'm going to ask a number of questions, but they all need to either start with describe for me, share with me, tell me about, or help me understand. What we don't want to do is a whole bunch of yes, no questions. We don't want to make them feel like it's an interrogation. Okay. So I'm going to say, so Gabe, describe for me ultimately what you're wanting to accomplish. Now, the reason I'm going to do it that way and use describe for me is the way that your and my brain works is like a computer. Your brain works like a computer. My brain works like a computer. If I say to them, to Gabe, describe for me ultimately what you're wanting to accomplish, I'm telling him, give me a lot of information. Versus if, if I just said, um, so what are you wanting to accomplish? He may say, well, to get my home sold. Okay, but if I say, describe for me ultimately what you're wanting to accomplish, hopefully he's going to give me way more detail. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to give you a list of a bunch of the questions I like to ask. This is by no means a complete list. There may be other questions that we've got other questions in our script book that you might want to use. But for me, the ones I always like, I like to start, start with, describe for me or share with me, tell me about, help me understand what you're ultimately wanting to accomplish. Now, he's going to then start to tell me what it is that he's wanting to accomplish. Along the way with that, I want to ask, I want to use what I call prompters. I want to say, okay, that's great. Hey, keep going. Tell me more. What else? I'm going to use these prompters to try to keep him going. So let's role play it if you're all right. And so, yeah. hey, so describe for me ultimately what you're wanting to accomplish in getting your home sold. Well, obviously, I want to get the best price I can for yeah, my house. For sure. I think it's a great house. I want some dedication from you, obviously, Okay. with us. Sure. So dedication. Yeah. What else? So now notice that's where I'm going to say what else. Um, we would like a lot of kind of dedicated marketing so that we can get our house out there and find buyers who are willing to purchase our property. Okay. So all of this stuff I would be writing down. Okay. Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. What else? Um, I want to make sure my my uh, my wife is comfortable with all of this and make sure she feels secure with uh, yeah, absolutely. the decisions we're making price-wise and things like that. So. so yeah, making sure she's comfortable. Sure, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah, what else? You can know. stop anytime. Yeah, I don't, I don't well, know. but that's how I'm going to do it. Is yeah. I'm every time I ask a question, I'm going to do, oh, okay, perfect. What else? Until he says, I don't know, that's probably about it. So then I would say, so now that that's how I'm going to deal with, describe for me ultimately what you're wanting to accomplish. The other one I may say to him, and again, you don't have to use all describe for me. I might say with him, so hey, can share with me your past experience, either good or bad, with working with real estate agents. Well, uh, we, we worked with a real estate agent who, he was kind of flaky and he didn't really, uh, he wasn't responsive. So now make sure that when he says stuff like this, you're keeping notes. I would want to be saying flaky and unresponsive. Okay, sure. So we felt like we weren't really cared for in the best way possible. And then we weren't really happy with how the transaction ended and the price that we listed our house for in the past. So. Okay, so he was flaky, didn't wasn't yeah. very responsive. So Okay, sure. What else? Um, that's about it. It was just, it was just not overall a very okay. good experience. So was there anything that the agent did that he liked? Um... He was a really nice guy. He was like... So now notice, I'm just asking additional questions around this one, okay? He would cooperate with us, but the, just the only problem was that he would not respond. Okay. So just really, that was the main thing is not response. So, so what do you think he should have done? How, what, would have, what would it need to do have looked like for you to be like, yeah, that was a good experience? Maybe just showing a little more dedication, checking in on us, making sure we were okay instead of... He just seemed very busy all the time and would kind of miss... So, so seemed busy, was missing appointments, stuff like that. Okay. Now, all of this stuff, I'm writing this down because, I, and I'll show you, I'm going to use it later on to my advantage. Okay. 
but ultimately I'm just trying to get as much information. So now I've done that. So, so I've, I, I'm going to both on what they did good and what they didn't do good. Like I'm going to ask both. So what they, what did you like that they did? What do you think they should have done? What would you, so I may even have, before I move on from that question. So what, uh, what, what are you going to be looking for in the next stage you choose? Um, just someone who treats us well, shows us love, and actually cares about the transaction and makes sure we go through with the, the good price. Yeah, so just want to, you want to make sure you care. Now, notice, though, really what he's kind of saying is he wants to fill these things. Yeah. Is that's what he's saying. Okay, but good. I'm going to go, okay, perfect. You just, okay, that makes sense. If I were you, I'd fill the exact same way. So, Okay. Well, sure. So let me ask you then. So uh, share with me, or maybe just to mix it up, I'll say. So tell me about how price is going to affect your decision. Well, we would re we'd really like to sell our house for a good price. I think it's a great place, and we obviously want to make money off of it and hopefully move into a new place as soon as possible. So. Okay. Sure. So um, what else? I don't know. Let's Nothing else. Okay, yeah. cool. Sounds good. Okay, so now the so I'm going to just ask these type of questions, and then once I've asked questions, then the next one, the last one I'm going to ask is for me. This is how I do it. So so Gabe, t share with me like what's your biggest concern or maybe fear? Like what what would keep you up at night, or what are you most worried about, concerned about in getting the home sold? I'm just worried we're going to get the same experience as we did last time with our agent, and not not be happy in the end and regret basically. Okay. So really your biggest thing you're worried about is just that, that you're going to end up with that, that every agent's the same and you're going to end up with that. Yeah, basically. Okay. Good. I want to feel secure. Perfect. With my agents. Yeah. So, which notice again, you were right back to this. Yeah. So, so for me, what, what has he just given us? What to do and what not to do. Yeah. Well, he, that's the thing that is so cool about this is if you'll just ask a lot of questions here, they're going to tell you exactly the answers to the test. They're giving them to you. And so now watch this. So before I move on, now that I've said, so what's your biggest concern? He said that they're gonna, we're going to end up with another agent that's like that. So what would have to happen for you to not feel that way? See, now I'm going to ask him the answers to the test. So what would have to happen? What would an agent have to do for you to, to be, feel comfortable and confident that, hey, we're going to be okay this time? Uh, just show us care, be responsive during the day, make sure to check in on us and make sure that we're okay with the decisions and happy with what's going on with our house. Okay. So you were saying check in. Like how often are you thinking you would want somebody to check in? Maybe just like – few times a week at least just make sure everything's running smoothly and our old agent wouldn't even contact us for yeah. five to six days at a time so yeah unfortunately I, I wish that that weren't the case but it's a valid fear it's a valid now notice what I'm going to do now is actually feed into it and you should be worried about that and so I'm going to be like you know I wish that weren't the case but but becoming a real estate agent is so easy that unfortunately we don't get people that are the best in this business. And, and so I, I totally get where you're coming from. So, so as far as that checking in, what would you like that to look like? Maybe just a call a few times a week, maybe after appointments, just like follow up and Make sure that we're happy with what's going on. Okay. And so would you want that to be a call or would a text be okay or email? Like what's your preference? Text or call works. Okay. So even, and what would you want as far as information on that text? Um, See, notice all I'm doing is just getting him to tell me all yeah. the answers because the next step is when I go to this. So right now we're still doing this. Uh -huh. When I go to this, guess what I'm going to tell him? I'm going to get, I'm going to show him my plan yeah. That fits exactly what he just said he wanted. But but here's what I will tell you. The magic in this is just the fact of me listening to him. Like for real, I know we're role playing, but how do you feel as I'm asking you those questions? I feel like you actually care. See, notice that. That's what happens. So I it, do, it almost doesn't even matter what I say here because of how I'm digging right now of, well, what are you going to want that to look like? And, and because he's telling me all that in his mind, what's going on right now, what's going on in his mind right now is 
this guy understands. He's not going to do the same thing. If, but have I said anything that way? I haven't told him what I'm going to do yet. I've not even told you what I'm going to do. But because I'm asking the questions and listening and digging on it of what do you want it to look like, he now, I'm creating this separation. See, I've already started this create value and separate just by asking all the questions. Yeah, you want someone who cares. He already knows that you care or you wouldn't be asking. Yeah, I wouldn't questions. be asking yeah. so many questions if I didn't care. See, that's the thing is that's where this, the magic in this is that the more, so we're going to on Tuesday, we're going to spend a ton of time on this. How do you do this really? Like the, not necessarily the listing side, we're going to talk more the buyer side, but I'm going to get into detail of how to do this in a way that I'm telling you. So when I learned this process, I'll probably say this again on Tuesday, so forgive me, but when I learned this process of this asking the questions, Art, I had gone to a training in Northern California. It was a three-day training. It was three days all day intense of how to do this. And at that training, there was a loan officer there. So I was there as an agent. My broker was there as a broker. There was a loan officer there. There was a financial guy, a finance, uh, financial planner, and a uh, insurance. Well, we were doing role play of this, and the guy that was the loan officer was a loan officer in the San Francisco Bay Area. He did this with me and said, hey, Russ, describe for me the ideal loan officer. Well, I had been in business for about three years at that point, and I was like, yeah, let me tell you. And I went into, like, they're going to do this. They're not going to do that. I hate it when they do this. I hate it when they do that. And when the light bulb clicked onto me, the power of this was when I realized how I felt in that moment. So, like, I, that's where it's crucial for you to connect with what, how you feel with me asking those questions. Yeah. Because... When the loan officer did that, and I was, I remember I said to the loan officer, after he hadn't told me one thing yet, all he had done is ask questions. And at the very end, I said to the loan officer, I wish you were a loan officer in Utah because I would give you all my business. Now, he hadn't even told me what he was going to do. But because he listened to me, vent my frustrations, my assumption was he didn't do that. He wasn't that type of a person. The same that Gabe has about me right now, right? Because are you feeling that mm -hmm. when we do it? Is that like, yeah, Russ isn't that agent that's going to. Yeah, it's like you're. Because the other guy obviously didn't care. That's what my problem was. So you're just showing me. That I care. Just by asking me. Just by asking questions. all these questions. See, I've uh, essentially, I've pretty much already got the listing right now. And that kind of adds to the first three things that you need. Yep. For them to all, you. all three of those are just getting covered right there. Or four, all, all four really, yeah, to here. some extent, four and maybe even five. Yeah. Because I'm now separating myself. Yeah. Okay. So now, oh, let me come back to before I move on. So that question of what is your biggest concern or what's your biggest fear is going to usually give you the secret sauce to getting the listing. They're usually going to tell you what the secret is. So let me um, let me uh, share a quick story with you on this. So I heard a guy tell a story. So I, I wasn't part of this, but, but talking along these same lines, I heard a guy tell a story about how he, this was a wholesaler and he went out to go, wanted to buy this lady's house. And when he talked to her and met with her at the end, he said, well, how much do you want? How much are you willing to sell your house for? And when she said what she was willing to sell her house for, he was like, oh, I can't pay that. And she said, well, I have somebody else that will pay that. And he said, well, that's great. You should sell it to them then. But like, and she said, well, how much would you buy it for? And he said, well, I would buy it for this price. And I don't remember what the difference was, but it was significant enough that she was like, well, yeah, no, I'm going to go with this other guy. And he says, okay. And then as he was leaving, he said to her, so, hey, what are your plans when you sell this house between that and buying the new one? Like you're going to have, because I think she was building a new house or something. I don't remember what it was, but for some reason, she had this break because where she really didn't have anywhere to go. And he said, I noticed you had those rabbits. What are you going to do with the rabbits? And he said, or the lady said, I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. And so this wholesaler guy said, well, you know, my mom has a farm and I'm sure she would keep them during your transition. So if you wanted to put those rabbits with my mom, I'm sure she would take them. And she said, are you serious? And he said, yeah. He said, well, let me call her to make sure, but I think she would. And she's like, you'd do that for me. He said, yeah. Okay. 
So he leaves, calls his mom, says, hey, could this lady come bring her rabbits to your house? And his mom says, yeah, that's fine. So he calls the lady back and he goes, hey, I talked to my mom. You're good. You, you can, here's her address. Just, uh, she knows. As so, soon as you get your home sold, um, take them out and she'll keep them until, you know, she'll take care of them until you're done. And she said, okay, but will you come back to my house? And he said, for what? She said, I changed my mind. I want, I'm going to sell it to you, not the other investor. Wow. And he said, well, why? Because I'm not going to pay what he's going to pay. And she said, yeah, but you cared about my bunnies. And I'll, I'll take less money to know my bunnies are taken care of. And he mm -hmm. said, that's fine, but I my mom would still watch your bunnies even if you buy it from him. She said, I don't care. It comes so wow. part of the moral on this is you got to find the bunnies. You got to ask questions to figure out what are the bunnies. Yeah. So, all right. Now that we've done that, now that I've dug and found out those questions, then I'm going to go number five is to my plan of action, or you can call it an action plan, either way you do what you want to call it, either a plan of action or an action plan. But ultimately, what this is going to be is where I'm now going to separate. This is where I'm going to separate. Can I myself. use one of your markers? What? Can I use one of your markers? Oh, yeah, for sure. What do you need it for? To highlight? Yes. Oh, oh sure. Okay, next is going to be the plan of action. Under the plan of action, now here's the hardest part for me to train you on this, is under the plan of action is I'm going to take that information that the game gave me and I'm going to just use it down here. So remember back here I said to you, we're not going to talk about marketing really. It's not like how many websites, how many flyers, how many open houses. That's not what this is. Really what I'm going to do is I'm going to now take, under plan of actions, I'm going to take what Gabe told me and plug it in here. So I, now is where I'm going to say, okay, so Gabe, is there anything else you feel like I should know about you or getting your home sold before I show with you what I do that makes me different than every other agent? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So then let's talk about it. So you mentioned to me your biggest concern was that lack of communication from other agents and... And man, like I said, I wish that weren't the case, but unfortunately, most agents, that is how they operate, but not me. So, so what, I, what I'm going to do under this plan of action is I want to be saying to them something along the long lines of most agents dot, 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 or fill in the blank. You're kind, of, you're kind of like marketing yourself. Yeah, you know, basically. Because what I'm going to say is, hey, unfortunately, most agents don't do that. Or most agents are that bad person you talked about, like however they said. And then I say, but not me. And then I, I like to say this way. Let me show you how I work. Yeah. So I'm kind of going to be saying, yeah, you know, unfortunately, most agents are going to do that. Most agents, like I want them to see there's a difference between, so the whole thing of this is separate yourself. And the way I'm going to separate myself is most agents are horrible. I, I'm not going to say that, but I'm going to say most agents, unfortunately, Gabe, most agents operate that way. All they care about is getting the listing. And once they get you the sign in your front of your yard, they figure if it sells, great. If it doesn't, I don't care. And in fact, I might even tell him this story. I might even say, well, as a brand new agent where I learned the importance of taking care of my client, and again, now I'm trying to separate, is I went out and met with a seller and came back one time and said, like, I just don't think their house is sellable based on the condition and the price and all the things that they wanted to do. And I remember I came back to the office and I said, I didn't take the listing because I didn't feel like I was going to be the best agent for them and that it was going to work out. And I had an agent in my office say to me, well, who is it? I'll go list it. And I didn't know it at the time because I was brand new. But this agent operated exactly how you're talking about, Gabe. Is, and I don't know who trains these agents that way. But unfortunately, there's a bunch that operate. And he would go take a listing. And if... He, if nobody ever called or showed the property, he never called the people again. Like, wow. but I don't work that way. That's not how. So let me share with you or show you. So you can either say share or show. Let me share with you or show you how I work. He said it. What? He said it. Oh, I didn't give him the information. I just was like, whatever. And I didn't. 
But unfortunately, our receptionist took phone calls all the time from his clients calling for the broker because they would say, he hasn't called me and he hasn't let me know what's going on. And like, so anyway, so I'm gonna say, let me share with you what I do to get a home sold. So I've, because I've heard the concerns you're talking about so much, Gabe, I actually have a set time every week that I call. So my plan is to call you every Friday between 10 and noon. So now watch what I do here. So Gabe, what would be the best phone number to call you on this Friday between 10 and noon? Uh, 385. Uh, so now, what did I just do? Well, I probably already had his phone yeah, number, but, a commitment. but I'm, I'm actually, by me saying, what number would you like me to call you on? Commitment I'm call. getting you committed to listing with me too. It's like, you're going to be my client by Friday, which is tomorrow. So you're going to be my client by Friday and I'll be calling you tomorrow between 10 and noon. So like, that's probably what I would even say. So what number should I call you on tomorrow between 10 and noon to update you? Slightly. It'll close my door. I'm, I'm joking. It's, no, I don't want you to know what I'm saying. Hey, give it to me because I need it for tomorrow. I, you, okay. you read through that, you'll understand. Except for this is highest highlights. Do you want the highlights? I'm trying to get rid of the highlights. I oh, can't. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to say. So Gabe, what number would you like me to call you on tomorrow between 10 and noon to give you an update? 385. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. So uh, we'll plan on that for tomorrow between 10 and noon. I'm going to call you. Now you mentioned a couple times a week. So, so is once a week going to be enough or do you want me to call and or text you twice a week? Now I'll tell you what they would, what they're going to say, but you go ahead and say what you're going to say. Um, I think that's totally fine. That's, more consistent than See, the last that's day, that's what in notice I didn't immediately say I'm gonna call you twice a week or contact you twice a week I I'm gonna stop with that and say Gabe I'm gonna guarantee like I will call you every Tuesday every Friday and in fact I might even say if I miss one you can call me and say I want out of my listing like I'll put it in the listing if I don't call Friday between 10 and noon and then now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, okay, so when I make that call, if for whatever reason you're not available, you want me to leave a message or call, give you a text after? Uh, should, should be a text. Okay, so if I miss you, I'll send you a text. And then if there's something you want to talk about, feel free to call me back and we'll talk about it. Okay. Now, notice though, at first he wanted two to three times a week, whatever. But because he now feels comfortable with me and I say, this is how I do it. And I'm going to call you every single week. They're typically going to be like, He's going to say, no, that's sufficient, but he might follow it up with, but if we had a question between Friday to Friday, could we call you? And I'm going to go, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Anytime you have a question, either shoot me a text or an email or call, whatever, whatever's going to with you. Sound good? So okay. So you're is trying it, to wiggle out of the two or three times. Well, yeah. Cause I don't want to call two or three, but for me, the way my business operates now, if he said, well, you know what? I think we'd really like to have one still on Tuesday. Okay. Then you just got to decide, okay, am I willing to do that? And if you are great. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Now, so let's come back to anything. So this section is just going to be that same thing over and over. Anything that I got up here, I'm just going to plug in down here. That's why you have to take notes up here so that you get everything they talked about. Because, and before I moved on, I said, well, is there anything else that you were concerned about? Nope, I'm good. Okay. Well, then let's go through and talk about what I do. And then I'm going to take what I do. I'm going to take what he wants and mesh it into what I do. So just no different that he wanted to call two times a week. Well, this is how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to call once a week. Is that going to be okay? Yeah. Because if it's not, then I'll, you know, I'll figure it out. I'm not going to tell him that. But if, if I said to him, I call every Friday. Is that going to be sufficient? If we had a guaranteed between 10 and noon on Friday, you're going to get a call from me. Is that going to be okay? Mm -hmm. He said, yep. Great. If he says, ah, I'd really like another one, then you got to decide if you're willing to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. So are you good with this section based on, Yeah. I'm going to take whatever they set up here. Like now where he talked about making sure I get the most amount of money, I down here would have just said, you know, most agents, 
the way that they operate is if they get an offer, they're going to beat you up and try to get you to accept it. Not me. Let me share with you what I do. When I get an offer in, we're going to look at that offer and we're going to look at every piece of the offer, the terms, the closing date, the, everything. And we're going to do our very best to make it fit what you're looking for. Now, we're probably going to have to be flexible. We're going to have to give a little here and there, but I'm going to do everything I can to make sure we're netting you the most amount of money that you were concerned about. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Then, so now that we've done all that, I'm going to say at this point now, I, I like to just for the training, draw a line here. Okay. Think of it as drawing a line in the sand. Okay. Because the next thing is I should have now created connection and rapport. He should feel safe. He should trust me. He should see the value of working with me. And I should have separated myself. It's time to talk price, but I first got to find out if he has chosen me. So what I'm going to do when I get to this at the end of this is I'm going to say, okay, is there anything else that you feel like we need to talk about Gabe, that we haven't? Uh, no, you got over pretty much. Okay, good. So let me ask you this on a scale of one to 10, one being get out of my house right now, 10 being where do I sign? Where are we at? I'd say about seven. A seven. Okay. So what would have to happen? What did I miss? What have I not covered that would have to, that would, what would we have to do to get to a 10? Um, maybe go over the price. Okay. Pricing of what we're at. So is it safe to say if we can come to an agreement on price, you are comfortable and confident with me as yeah. being your agent? Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Then let's go. Then I'm going to go. Because see now, all I, once I know Hey, as long as we can come to, by me saying, if we can come to an agreement on price, are you good with me? Yep. Okay. Let's do it then. I'm good. Now we'll talk about it. Because in essence, he's saying, I've chosen you if we can come to an agreement. And if we can't, then that's okay. They say, um, I don't know, because we're going to want to think about it. Yada, yada. Okay, sure. So let's role play it. So on a scale of one to 10, Scott, where are we at? In one being get out of my house, 10 being where do I sign? Seven. Seven. Okay. Wow. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to go. Okay. Seven. Okay. So what would have to happen for us to be to a ten? What did I? What did I miss? Or what did I leave out? Well, we need to come to agreement on, on price and commissions. I mean, what's it going to cost? To okay. Sure. To sell sense. the house and then. So that would be eight really and nine. Mull it over. And, yeah. We never make a decision on the day of. Now, okay, sure. Yeah, if I were you, I would feel the exact same way. So, okay, so it sounds like, though, that there's not anything I haven't covered other than price and commission. Right. And, and if we can come to an agreement, if we can come to an agreement on price and commission and you sleep on it, we're good. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Then let's go ahead and do it. So then let's start to talk about price. Now, what I would do, though, is we're going to go through and hit price and commission. And then at the end, when he says, okay, we just want to sleep on it now, I'm going to go, perfect, let's do this. Let's get everything signed, but not effective until tomorrow. That way I can go back and start getting to work. And then if tomorrow morning you are not okay with it, you just call me up and I'll tear it up. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Well, that works. Perfect. Then we're going to go through and now talk about price. So the next, so now on price was, remember I said we're going to start with the market. So the first thing I'm going to do now is just talk about what's going on in the macro or the big picture. Then we're going to talk about pricing and then we'll get to the CMA, oops, CMA for their house. So in terms of market, if somebody asked you today, what's going on in the market? How would you answer that question? What's going on in the market today? Right, so fluctuated down a little bit, you know, back and forth. Yeah. Pricing has been kind of stable, but starting to go up a little. Okay, perfect. That's what we want to do is this macro. The first thing we want to do is just talk about, here's what's going on in the market. Our inventory is still really low. Rates have been high, but they've come down a little bit. There seems to be a little bit more action. You know, maybe the spring selling season seems to be starting, but that's kind of what's going on in the market today and how that's going to affect you in terms of pricing. And then I'm gonna go through now and we'll talk about pricing. So what I wanna do with this in terms of pricing with them is I wanna to talk to them and say, so I'd be saying, Gabe, okay, 
Here's what we want to do is we want to keep track. Every week when I call you, we're going to talk about two things. Well, three really, but we're going to talk about first is the number of showings we've had. We're then going to talk about the number of offers we've gotten. And then last, we're going to talk about what does that mean for your price? And then I'm going to say this. So Gabe, if we go a week, well, actually three weeks. So I'm going to tell him, we're, we're going to talk weekly, but every three weeks. So every three weeks, we're going to look at how many showings have we had. And if we've had none, we're going to look at how many offers we've had. And if we've had no showings, we probably will have had no offers. Then that means we are overpriced and need to reduce the price somewhere between 7 and 10%. So if we're getting no showings and no offers, my experience tells me you are 7 we're, we're at least 7% overpriced and probably need to reduce it by 7 to 10%. If after three weeks we've had some showings, and I would define that as one to three a week, but no offers, we need to reduce the price between 5 and 7%. We're between 5 and 7% overpriced. And I'm going to just say, so okay, homes will sell within 4%. When we get your list price within 4% of what the market value is, it will sell. Mm -hmm. But until if we are getting no showings, no offers, that is the market's way of telling you you're too far overpriced and you're probably 7 to 10% too high. If we're getting some showings, and I define that as one to three a week on average, so if we get one one week and then none the others, we really fit into this category. But if we're getting one to three but no offers, we need to reduce the price probably five to seven percent. So that's how the market's going to communicate. So when I call you every Friday, so notice I'm going to tie this back again. I will be calling every Friday and we're going to talk about these things. So it's almost like now, bummer, now you're going to wish I hadn't called. <laughs> but when I call, we're going to talk about these things and we're going to talk about, hey, and then you're going to have to decide, do I want to leave the price where it is? Do I want to adjust the price based on these things? Or do I want to just take the home off the market altogether? And I'm fine with any of those. But, but every three weeks, we need to make that decision of, are we taking it off? Are we going to adjust the price? Or are we good? Or we're just going to see, you know, we, you know, maybe we've had showings and some offers, but we just haven't come to terms, and we're just going to leave it where it's at. That's fine, too. How do you feel about that? I feel great about that. Okay, good. So now let's talk about the pricing on your house. And then from there, I'm going to go through and show them, here's the homes that have sold, here's the ones that are under contract, here's the actives. Based on that, where do you think your home should be priced? And notice that I'm going to say it that way. Based on these comparables, where do you feel like your home should be priced? Um, maybe the 500 to 600,000 mark. That's a pretty big range. So where do you think it should be? Maybe 550. 550? Okay, great. And if I'm good with 550, I'm going to say great. If I'm not, if I feel like, ooh, it really ought to be lower than that, I might say to him, hey, I'm good, Gabe, at any price you want to list. I don't really care as long as you'll follow this. As long as you're willing to follow this, that's great. Well, let's do it. And then, so if I feel like he's overpriced, I'm going to really emphasize we got to follow this process. So let's try it and see what happens. But we, if we go more than three weeks and we haven't gotten some offers, we really got to adjust quickly. So. so really, you're not giving him any suggestions. You are asking him what he thinks. Yep, to begin with. And then I may try to influence it depending on the price of like, you know, as I'm going through the comparables and I'm showing him the solds, I might say this home is probably the most comparable to yours to try to say this is probably the price. But. And then number seven, the final thing is close. So now, let's say, so we're going to do this once with Gabe and once with Scott. So Gabe, based on what we've talked about, sounds like you're good at 550, and we'll just keep an eye on that and adjust as we need to, if we need to. Hopefully we won't, but you're good with that? Yeah. yeah really okay. So um, did you want to get it, have it hit the market tonight or tomorrow, or do you want to wait till Monday? Like, when do you want it to go on? So notice I'm closing now. So when did you want it to hit the market? Um... As soon as possible, we want, to, we want to move, so. Okay, perfect. So today we work. Yeah. Great. I just need you to sign these papers. Okay. Boom, sign. Now, I didn't even talk commission because I'm the agent, yeah. right? Okay, so now we'll go to Scott. Now I set him up, though. All right, so Scott, <laughs> now that we've talked price, um, how do you feel about what we've talked about? 
Yeah, I think that looks okay. I'm we're not in a big hurry, so that takes a while to sell. We're okay, okay. with that, like sitting on the price. Okay. To get, to get what we want. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So, um, how soon did you want it to hit the market then? Should we put it on tonight uh, or tomorrow? We got a few things we want to wrap up around here. Okay. A couple things we want to paint, you know. Okay. We talked about those walls in that one bedroom. We want to touch those up. So, Perfect. maybe give us a week. Okay, perfect. That hey, and in fact, Scott, that works out perfect because you guys, you said you wanted to sleep on it anyway, right? Right. So that works great. So let's do this. I'll just date the paperwork for a week from today. You can sign it. If any time during that week, either it gets delayed and we got to push it back a day, couple days, no worries, or you decide no, we don't want to list with Russ, I'll tear it up. Okay. So just need your signature right there. Well, <laughs> you haven't. We haven't discussed what. Commission, you know, what's it? Oh, sure, yeah. So let's do what's that. It cost? Yeah, sure. Let's go through and talk about the commission. So, um, and then I'm just going to, whatever my commission, I'm going to just say, I, for me, I typically do this. I got three options. We can do six, seven, or eight percent. So, in order to accomplish what you're wanting to, I would probably recommend eight, but, you know, do you have a preference? Can he ask? Well, what's the difference? Sure. Green. No, you can't ask that. Yes, you can ask that. <laughs> Um, well, it's just that we had this friend. Sure. And the, their agent did it for five. Okay. Uh, what? What are you going to do that he's not going to do? So, yeah. So, actually, it's a great point, and I'm so glad you brought that up. Let me share with you why I feel like doing it at five is not to your advantage. So, typically, the way it works is we're going to take part of that commission and offer it to the other side, to whoever brings in the buyer. So, my minimum that I'm going to do is for 3%. So if we do it for five, that means we're offering two to whoever brings in the buyers. And my concern with you for that and why I don't think that's in your best interest is when an agent compares your house to others and they're out showing those houses, they're going to look at to see how much am I going to get paid off this. And quite honestly, some agents will have had their client sign a buyer broker agreement that says that they're going to get paid three. So when they see two, it just might not even work. They might be like, I can't show that to my client. Really? So that's why I would recommend we do six so that that way every buyer out there is going to want it. And the reason I like 7% is because if we offer three and a half to whoever brings in the buyer, now you've got eight or four if we did 8%. Now every agent out there in the market wants to sell your house because they know they're going to get paid more money. I mean, if your boss came to you and said, you can do this job and get paid your normal salary or do this job that's the same job, but you're going to get paid a little bit more money, which job would you choose? That's how agents work too. Like they're going to push to get your house sold. So would you rather do six or seven? Um, well, I'd rather start at the six and then see how okay. that goes. Okay, it's great. Let's that's do it. That's all not working. We can always increase it. Yeah, exactly right. Let's have you sign this. Oh, okay. That's interesting what you just did, Russ. Because talking talking to the other agents, the six, seven, or eight is not based on what you said right now, mm -hmm. but based on the kind of service they offer. Well, yeah, and you could do that too. Yeah, you could do that too. You could say for six percent, I'm just going to do my normal marketing. For seven percent, I'm going to go and I'm going to knock on a hundred doors in your neighborhood every month, and I'm going to hold so many open houses. And, but for 8%, I'm going to come and wash your dishes and I mean, whatever, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's fine. You can just – now, so like Justin Udy, who's one of the top agents in our company, he, that, he has that. He has a 6, 7, and 8, and then he has here's the services I do for 6, here's the services I do for 7, here's the services I do for 8. Yeah, because that's what the, the way I have heard it. Yeah, what? and so that's fine. That just you drone, decide. Age, whatever. Do what? Drone footage. Yeah, drones and, you know, virtual tours. Matterport or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, you decide what service will you do for each of those. And I that's the thing. It's just a lot of times what they'll do is they'll say, well, would you be willing to do all – if we listen with you, would you do all the stuff for those same things that you do at 8 for 7 or all those things for 8 for 6? And you decide, ah, I'd do it for 6.5 or something, you know. So you decide. Hmm. Cool. All right.
Okay, any other questions? Justin even said that he'll even break it down to even to a quarter or a percent if he has yeah. to. That... Yeah, don't always assume you have to go one full percent, go half percents or quarters. So. Okay, well, thank you for being here. So next Tuesday, we're going to do needs analysis. So next Tuesday is more of like, okay, now we're going to be meeting with a buyer. What's the process? And I'm going to dig in a lot deeper into this next Tuesday, so the questions part. So those questions part could apply either for the buyer or the seller. Correct. Yeah. The, the process no. we're going to talk mostly to on Tuesday about the with a buyer, but the process of it working is the same. So I, I now that you finish, I, I didn't want to interrupt you when you were talking. How what is what did the scout could do, could have done different or now that you have the, this time passed by, what could you have done different? with a person that says, oh yeah, I interviewed three agents, but I'm going to go with the one that is offering to sell my house for a price that you knew it wasn't going to sell. How will you address So that? yeah, great question. For me, the biggest thing is I'm gonna come back to this. Like for example, I know, I heard, I should say, I shouldn't say I know, I heard of somebody in our company just listing a property like 700,000 over what it's probably worth. Wow. And it's not a $7 million house. So, but here's the thing for me, and I haven't talked to the agent. So I, one, I don't know if it's true Two, but for me, number two is if I, I would be willing to do that. If I met with Scott and he said, we want to try to sell our home for $1.3 million. And I'm like, it's only worth like six. I would say I'm fine with that. As long as you'll follow this process, if you'll follow this process until we can get it sold, I'm okay with that. So like what's, I'll list it at one, you know, 700,000 over, assuming that you're going to, you do want to get the home sold though. Yeah. Yeah. And what's kind of the price that you're like, if I can't get this, I just won't sell. And if, if it's realistic, I'm, then great, let's do this. But if he's like, well, I got it at least. So let's say it was 1.3 and he's like, and that's, let's say 700,000 too high. And he says, I still got to at least get a million. If I can't sell it for a million, I don't, I'm not going anywhere. Then I probably at that point, I'm going to be like, okay. Or I'll say, okay, let's do this. And I'll follow this process. I'm giving an extreme example, but I'll follow this. As long as he's willing to follow this process, I don't care what price you want to list it at. But the moment they quit following this process, I'm going to get rid of the listing. I don't, I don't want my name on a property advertising in a neighborhood. Like number one, as soon as your sign goes up and the neighbors look and see it's $700,000, you're a joke as an agent. Like the seller's a joke, but so are you to be willing to, to list it. And I don't want that in the neighborhood. Well, the reason I'm saying that because the, the listing I lost, he was overpriced. By how much? Because, but about two or 300. And what was his... Less he price. wanted he wanted seven hundred twenty. Yeah. See, if you're seven twenty and it's worth five twenty, like for me, I'm probably going to be like, I'm I'm probably not like I'm going to create all the value and then I'm going to go. You know what? I, I don't think I'm the right agent for you. And then but, they're going to be like, why? But then again, I was I I was brand new to Century Twenty One. Gotcha. I didn't know. You didn't know that the pricing strategy. And the, yeah. my, I was in another team and the person that went with me, she didn't know that either. Yeah. And so, cause I was thinking if after talking about that strategy, they didn't want to, to work with that. I will say, you know what, probably we are not right for each other yeah. because after that experience was a humongous waste of my time, yeah, it's a waste of time. for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I have, so here's the other thing I will say, and we'll wrap up with this is you can't outguess the market. Like I've listed homes. I listed one out in Magna that the lady wanted to list it for 107, 107,000. And it was probably worth, I told her every house in the neighborhood, the neighborhood they in, they were in, there were like two or three model homes. That's it. Like models of homes. They were all the same. And every single one of them sold between 95 and 99, 95. And so I went in and said, if you're in good condition, you'll get 99 for it. If it's crappy, you're going to get 95. That's it. Like you're somewhere in between that 5,000 range. And she's like, I want to list it at 107. She said, actually, what she said to me is, I had a dream last night. We sold it for 107. And I was like, okay, but like, even if we get an offer at 107, so this is the other thing I would be saying to this, 
to the appraisals. To, yeah, it's not going to appraise. So even if we get somebody that's willing to pay it, the appraisers, the banks, unless they're paying cash, you're not going to sell it. So I said to the lady, even if we get an offer, it's probably not going to appraise at 107. She's like, I had a dream. And I said, okay, you'll follow this process though. Yep, great. Listed it two days later, I had a full price offer. <laughs> For 107? And I said to her, she's like, told you. And I said, I know, I understand. Just keep in mind, it hasn't been appraised yet. So the appraiser might come in and say 100 and or 101, and we might be stuck. Well, I, let's see what happens. Appraisal came through, he appraised it. Now this was this was before 2008 when back then appraisers were like, what do you need it to appraise for? Oh yeah, sure. But it sold. So that one taught me like you can't outguess the market. Like you just never know. I also have had properties that was one that I did that was on kind of ninth and ninth area that was a property I bought to fix up and sell. And when I listed it, I actually so when I first bought it, I kind of thought I would sell it for this price. By the time I had repaired it, I was like, I might be able to get this price. So I listed it clear up here and I got tons and tons of showings, tons, but no offers. And I was like, huh, okay. And so I reduced the price, reduced the price, got down to where I thought it should sell and it still didn't sell. So I had to reduce it just a little below that. And when I did, then it sold. But then you broke even. No, I still made money. Oh, you made but, but. Here's what I didn't realize at the time. Right across the street from the property was a power substation. So if that power substation wasn't there, I could have sold it for the this price. It would have. I know it would have. Because everybody that looked at it when I called for feedback, we don't like the power substation. 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 Yeah, we'll deal with the power substation at this price. Yeah, because that's what I was going to say. Then I heard from other team leaders that, when there is something like that, power station, big road, busy yeah. road, something like that, the uh, a property already is ten percent lower than yep. whatever Correct. else. Yep. You got it. Okay. Thank Thanks for being here. Well, nice. Thank you. And then I'm bringing. Wow! Wow! I even got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Standing over. Well, you went the extra mile. That's what I was going to say. Usually, people are standing. Yeah. <laughs>